Hi there, my name is Scott Camp Schaefer and I'm a clinical social worker here in Austin, Texas and uh, I'm talking to you today about uh, self-pity and how it has an impact on addiction. Uh, this is a often referred to but not very well understood phenomenon that it's not just a matter of feeling sorry for oneself although you know people often talk about oh I'm feeling sorry for myself I feel sorry for myself, etc. But what they don't understand is that, uh, or a lot of people don't understand, is that uh, there's a, a major attachment wound that can be tied up with feeling self-pity or feeling sorry for yourself. Because at some point in the past, uh, one of the person's primary caregivers wasn't available to them when they needed them to somehow affirm them or somehow uh, reassure them. And what the, the child winds up doing is they wind up uh, developing this feeling of self-pity, uh, which is uh, an isolating feeling. And it happens to a huge number of people, especially people who have or are prone to addiction issues. Because to the extent that their primary caregivers weren't available to help them, to support them during a time where they were hurting or they were somehow upset, that people can wind up looking to substances or compulsive behaviors to fill the void. So uh, this can create huge problems in people's lives when they, or if they start to turn to uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, or other drugs, or other behaviors that can somehow uh, assuage or salve, like a, be like a salve on that wound that the self-pity has come in to take the place of. So. Um, I don't want to understate the significance of this problem because it has huge uh, consequences for a lot of people in their lives. Now, um, so basically what I just depicted for you is kind of how the cycle starts. So when somebody is very young, uh, let's say <clears throat> a five-year-old child, um, their mother or father uh, reprimands them, they wind up going to their room or something upsetting happens and they say, well, you know, Maybe something like, oh, well, you really want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. And then the child winds up hurting. They're not validated. They're not reassured. Maybe they go off to their rooms by themselves and they sulk. Uh, but in any case, what they needed was some sort of validation or reassurance at the time. And this, <clears throat> this, this takes up residence in uh, a person's being, especially as they mature through adolescence into adulthood. And these kinds of incidents can kind of crystallize and <clears throat> instead of turning to other people, what people can wind up doing is they can turn to substances or behavioral addictions to fill that void that was left when they didn't get the validation that they need, they needed at the time. So, uh, and this, this cycle just goes on and on. It just tends to get worse and worse as time goes on unless it's inter interrupted by some uh, something that can break the cycle and uh, reestablish some sort of affirmation or validation for the person that they didn't get when they were younger. And so what I'm kind of hinting at is this is one of the ways to get out of self-pity is to have trusted friends or family members uh, or a uh, support group, a recovery group, or a trusted therapist who can uh, validate the person's experience, uh, especially the one that happened when they were much younger, that when they didn't get the uh, affirmation that they needed. But being able to talk about feeling sad, feeling depressed, uh, you know, feeling angry, feeling guilty or ashamed is, is tremendously important for people who are trying to recover from uh, substance use disorders or other behavioral addictive disorders. Uh, and that's why the recovery groups can be so important, especially like with the sponsor or with, who you can talk about all of your issues with. But if you don't have trusted friends or family or a support group or that has a sponsor in it that you can go to, then <clears throat> that's part of what individual or group therapy can help with. So um, one of the things I really urge all of my clients to do is to have others that they can talk to and get validation from and you know vice versa as well but if you don't have uh, those important people in your life then it really is important to seek help and if you're in the Central Texas area you can contact me uh, especially in the Austin metro area and if I can't help you 
with uh, dealing with your uh, addiction, particularly uh, people who have compulsive or addictive sexual behavior, especially men, which is what I specialize with, then I could uh, find somebody who, who can, and then you're on the road to uh, recovery if you haven't really uh, clearly been on that road before. Um, it can be a great journey, uh, and some people think it, it, can, it lasts an entire lifetime because people's uh, growth and maturation out of addictive behaviors uh, is a never-ending process, and it's filled with ups and downs, uh, and that's something that I can talk with you about, at least in some broad brushstrokes. But the main thing is, you know, try to get out of isolation whatever way you can and through connecting with other people in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so uh, I really appreciate you listening today, and uh, I wish you all the best in your journeys, whether it be recovery or mental health or just in life in general. And um, again, call me, reach out to me if I can be some, of some support, especially if you live in the Central Texas area. But in any case, uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, take good care.